today we're going to talk about carb cycling, what it is, how it works, why it works, and why you should implement it in your own diet strategy. And so what we're going to start with is essentially what is a diet, and that starts with what the human body is. And basically what we are is a closed thermodynamic system, meaning we have some energy input in and some energy input out, and they have to equal each other. And the reason they have to equal each other is the law of conservation of energy. And you can disagree with that all you want, but I can tell you that every physicist of the last 150 years has devoted a large portion of their life to proving that wrong. Because if anyone can ever prove it wrong, it's an immediately guaranteed Nobel Prize. And even better, you're the world's first trillionaire because you solved the world energy crisis and you're creating energy from nothing. That's what this means. If calories in doesn't equal calories out, it means you've created energy from nothing. Meaning we no longer need uh, coal fuel, gasoline, oil, electric energy, nothing. We just snap our fingers and have magical energy. And so that doesn't happen. And so what's going on then is, so if we eat 2,000 calories and we burn 3,000 calories, we're a net negative 1,000 calories. Where do those calories have to come from? They come from stored energy in the body. And the body stores energy in three ways. One is carbs, which is glycogen. The body stores carbohydrates as glycogen in the muscle and the liver. Two is fat. Obviously, we have almost essentially unlimited ability to store fat for energy reserves. And three is muscle. Now, we want to not use muscle for energy, and we want to maximize the amount of fat we use for energy by playing with the way we use carbohydrates for energy. And that's essentially the gist of carb cycling. And so how does it work? Well, let's start with the case of a, a diet situation. And I'll start with, uh, this is shown in studies, let's take two cases. Case one is a person eats a hypercaloric diet with the same amount of calories every single day of the week. Say they're in a 500 calorie daily deficit, that's 3,500 calories for the week or about a pound of fat per week if all those excess calories come from stored fat energy. Now if you take that same person and have them eat the same total weekly calorie count, but on one of those days the calories go very high and on the rest of the days they're a little bit lower, that person will actually have an improved body composition over the first person. And why? That's, that's where carb cycling comes in. So let's take an example. We have a person, let's do a simple, a simple carb cycle where we do very low carbohydrate days with one high carbohydrate day. So six days a week we have very low carbohydrates, we're burning stored glycogen, we're burning fat for energy, and hopefully not any muscle for energy. Now we get to the seventh day and we're depleted in glycogen, uh, we've been burning some fat, but we're so depleted in glycogen that, that now we're on the verge of running out of muscle glycogen and, and needing to create that carbohydrate energy in cases where we need it. And the way the body creates it is through gluconeogenesis, which is breaking down protein structures to create glucose to create the energy source. And in the worst case scenario, that's going to come from breakdown of muscle tissue. And so I'll use myself for an example. Someone my size could probably store about a thousand grams of uh, glycogen. And then let's say on a typical diet, just for round numbers, let's say I can eat 250 grams of protein and 500 grams of carbohydrates without storing any calories as fat. Let's say that's my baseline metabolism. Now, I, let's say that I go into that high carb day depleted of all 1,000 grams of glycogen. It's not going to happen when it's easy for just for round numbers, we'll use that. So I go into that high day already depleted of 1,000 grams of glycogen, and we know I can eat 500 grams of carbohydrates without storing as, any as fat. So what that means then, is I can eat 1,500 grams of carbs on that day, which I know is more calories than I burn. So I know I'm going to store those calories as energy in the body, but because I'm depleted of glycogen, those calories are going to be preferentially stored as glycogen rather than fat if they come from carbohydrate sources. And so that's what we do. So in that case, I can eat 1,500 grams of carbs. Now imagine yourself four weeks out of a contest, starving, carb depleted. Imagine what kind of mental and physical energy boost you're going to get from eating 1,500 grams of carbohydrates in a day. And even better, knowing that none, none or very little of those carbohydrates are going to be stored as fat, 
They're going to be stored as muscle glycogen, which then powers you through the rest of the week for the initial stages of any energy deficit where you're using stored glycogen before stored fat. And, that, and that's basically the gist of carb cycling for fat loss. And so let me, let me give an example of typically how I'll do it. We'll have three different days. We'll have your low carb days, your medium carb days, and your high carb days. Now the low carb days are going to be on your days off. And on those days, we're going to go very low carbohydrate. You don't need carbs. We're not doing anything. We're not training. Maybe we're doing cardio, but we don't want to use carb energy for cardio anyways. We want to maximize the amount of fat we use. So on that day, let's, I'll just give some examples. Let's say this person is eating 50 grams of protein per meal, maybe only vegetables for carbs, and maybe 10 grams of additional fat on top of the protein fat per meal. So it's a hypocaloric day, very low calorie. They're depleting the body of energy reserves, uh, prefer prefer preferably from fat sources, hopefully. Uh, and because carbohydrates are so low and we're not doing any intense activity, a lot of those calories will come from fat. And then on the medium carb day will be basically any day we're training with weights. And let's say we do the same thing, 50 grams of protein. And let's say, for it wouldn't be this way with the way I would do it, we would vary by the meal, but let's for round numbers, let's say the person is having 50 grams of carbs per meal, and then let's say seven grams of fat. So in this case, the calories are higher than the low day. Most of the excess calories, really all of them, because everything else is either equal or lower, is coming from carbohydrates. That provides an easy energy source for weight training uh, to, to make sure that, you know, so you can actually train hard, you're not so depleted. But if that net calorie total is less than the calories you burn, you are still going to lose that stored energy from the body as a mixture of fat and carbohydrates. Now we go into that high day. And now I'm extremely depleted in glycogen from all the low days and the medium days throughout the week. And on this day, let's say I do 30 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs per meal, and zero grams of added fat. Now, Imagine being in a, in, a, in, a, in a deep contest diet, being able to eat 150 grams of carbs six times a day and not only not lose progress with your diet, but improve progress with the diet. And that's basically what this is doing. And that, that's all it is. It's just, it's, just, it's just playing with the way the body stores energy. Everything is bound by the boundary conditions of calories in versus calories out. But because all calories aren't created the same, we just work with the difference to maximize the rate of fat loss and minimize the rate of muscle loss. That's, that's all it is. The high day increases your metabolism, uh, keeps you uh, stored, filled with glycogen stores so you have readily uh, energy sources available for your training on your medium days. And then uh, it provides a mental boost of not being <laughs> so depleted in glycogen where you're unable to function essentially. And so that's really the, the long and short of it. Now, this also works in the off season. And so in the off season, why do you want the extremely high carbohydrates? And so everyone's going to think, well, protein is what builds muscle. Well, don't I want extremely high protein in the off season? And I'll tell you why you don't. I mean, you want some amount of protein and no one knows the exact amount you need to, to prevent muscle loss and maximize muscle growth. But I can guarantee you it's not as high as what people are eating. And we'll, we'll actually use it, we'll, we'll do numerically what happens. So let's take someone and say they gained, they've been training for 10 years and they've added 150 pounds of muscle. They started as a 15 year old, as a 150 pound 15 year old kid, and now they're 25 and they're 300 pounds of mass monster. And so that's an extremely high rate of growth, you know, 15 pounds a year. Well, if you break that down, that's only about 25 grams of protein synthesis per day. That's it. So if you're eating 500 grams of protein, only 25, if only 25 grams of those actually go to build new muscle, you go from 150 pound junior in high school to 300 pound 25 year old mass monster. And so it's, it's, there's more involved than just throwing protein at, at the problem. And that's what I call first level thinking. And, and everyone does this, but anytime you try something new and you think, okay, protein builds muscle, I'll eat more protein and build more muscle. That's first level thinking, meaning that it, any, with anything that has any level of difficulty to achieve, first level thinking is never the solution. Because if it was, everyone would achieve their goals. Because the first thing you think, 
I need more protein to grow, I'll eat more protein, boom, I'm bigger. That's the first thing everyone thinks. Since everyone isn't bigger, there's, there's more to the problem. And that is how you actually use that protein. And in the off season, the high carbohydrate days allow you to maximize the muscle growth despite eating less protein. And the way that works is insulin. Now insulin, people say insulin is the most powerful anabolic. It's really not, insulin is just anti-catabolic, but it creates anabolism through a secondary mechanism. Uh, when insulin binds to a, a receptor, it increases the amino acid uptake into that cell. And now if you weight train and create a stimulus for protein synthesis at that cell, that cell is going to take any amino acids it has and synthesize new muscle proteins from it. Well, if you have the high insulin level and have more of those cells bound with insulin, driving more amino acids into them, you're increasing the potential for muscle growth from the protein you eat. So that's second level thinking. Now, first level thinking, we said we just eat more protein. But we, don't, we, we have nothing to, to force that protein to actually synthesize new muscle. With this approach, we do. Now what we do is we create the protein synthesis through weight training. And rather than just throw protein on the problem and hope it works, we take the protein we're already eating and we maximize its efficiency or effectiveness through the increased carbohydrate intake. And so that's what we do in the off season, where in pre-contest we'll have one high carbohydrate day, which is just to restore glycogen, keep uh, metabolism relatively high, uh, provide some sanity to the diet and some energy reserves to power you through the low carbohydrate days, and that's it. In the off season, the high carbohydrate days are different because we're not going to the high carbohydrate days depleted. We're going into them with the idea of we're going to just maximize the amount of protein synthesis we can create from the, from the protein we eat on a select number of days of the week. And so you might say, well, why don't we just do it every day of the week? And the problem is, is because these are hypercaloric days. You're eating more calories than you burn. Now, when done correctly, we're maximizing the number of those calories that are both stored as glycogen and synthesized as new protein, but you can never guarantee that you, every single calorie you eat above what you burn is going to be stored the way you want it to. Some of it's always going to be stored as fat. And so that's why you can't do it every day. Because if you did it every day, you would essentially just, I mean, and that, that goes right back to first level thinking. If you did it every day, you would just be too hypercaloric every single day of the week. You'd never be depleted enough in glycogen to create this need for more glycogen storage, and you would end up just getting fat. So what we do is, the ultimate goal is to move to three high carbohydrate days a week in the off-season. So we'll have the same thing. We'll have our low days on our off days. We'll have our medium days as our base training day. And then two to three days a week, we'll have our high day, where we take advantage of all those things I was talking about. Now typically that would start out as like a leg and a back day, and maybe the third day would be on a weak body part day. And the, the other thing that's kind of counterintuitive is the high carbohydrate days on the off season will tend to be lower in carbohydrate than in the contest diet or in any fat loss diet. And the reason is, is because in the, in the fat loss diet, we're going into those high days extremely glycogen depleted. And so we have more room to force glycogen in to top off the lost glycogen reserves before we start getting into that hypercaloric intake. In the off season, we're not entering these high days very depleted. We have lots of carbs on this day, quite a bit of carbs on this day. So we're ending that day a few hundred grams depleted at best, whereas opposed to like in the case of the thousand grams depletion in, in, the, in the contest diet. And so we can't force them quite as high. And so, but, but you're, you're taking them high enough to take advantage of those mechanisms that, that kind of uh, f facilitate a faster rate of growth. And, and, and that's really it. That's, that's, that's the whole gist of it. Is you're always bound, you have to understand, you're bound by that. Calories in, calories out, this cycle, and they always have to be equal. And within that mix, you have three energy sources. Protein, carbs, and fat. Now at all times of the year, we want to minimize the amount of protein we're using for energy. We want to use no protein for energy if possible. And we want to maximize the amount of, in the off season, we want to maximize the amount of carbohydrates we're using for energy because that's the easiest energy source that provides the most effective energy for, for weight training. And the contest side, we want to maximize the amount of fat we're using for energy. And all those things can be done by manipulating those three macronutrients under, under the boundary conditions that calories in have to be equal to calories out one way or the other. And if they're not, the body is going to pull those calories from the energy reserves in the body or store those excess, excess calories and energy reserves in the body. And carbohydrate cycling is just a way to maximize the effectiveness 
of how those energy reserves are stored or lost, both in contest prep and in the off season.